love is kind of an overused word, and um, I think you know it's almost cliche before I've even said anything. But um, like Molly said, I'm from Sweden, and in Sweden, um, love is called elska, and elska is basically a word that is much stronger than love. You don't really use that for anything. Um, you use it when you really, really mean it. But even in that kind of more narrowed down definition, I would use it to describe how I feel about art and design. Um, design and love is for me about connections. And I feel like, um, you know, I like to get to know people. Um, there's always that kind of first encounter um, when things feel exhilarating and exciting, sometimes terrifying. Um, in any case, before um, I start talking about the things that I love, I wanted to tell you about an experience that I had um, that is the opposite of loving your work, that is hating your work. I was 14 years old, and I, was, I had gotten a summer job at the factory where my dad worked as a foreman. And all day long, I was plastering planks of wood. And it was so boring. I was just, I was dying. I, it, the time just wouldn't you know, pass. And so every lunch break, I would drive, or I would bike home to my parents' house to have lunch. And I tried to drag the time out because I just really didn't want to go back to my work. Um, and then when you know, there was only a few minutes left, I'd have to race to just get back to the afternoon shift. And one such day, I was racing down the hill um, from my parents' house, and I got to a crossing. And there, out of nowhere, was a car rushing towards me. And all I had the time to think was, oh my god, that car is going to hit me. And then everything just went black. And then when I woke up, there was like a thousand people looking at me. That's what it felt like anyway. <laughs> and somebody was like holding my head and said, don't get up, don't get up. Um, the ambulance is on its way. But all I could think of was, oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Like all these people are staring at me. And what am I wearing? Wooden clogs? <laughs> like, it's like this horrible outfit. And if I only would have gotten a job that I loved, this would have just never happened. <laughs> so when I finished Otis College of Art and Design, I was freelancing for a while. And I was doing some graphic design jobs for different firms and small companies. Um, but I also really wanted to do some illustration. because I had kind of double majored. So um, I did. Oh, sorry. I wanted to first say, what does it mean to love your work? And what it means to me um, is really like that you're really caring about the people that you're working with, and also that you care about the whole community at work. Like not only loving your work, but also the people that you're working with. So back to my Christmas card. Um, I did this Christmas card. Um, and at the time, when I was just out of school, and this is a really long time ago, um, I didn't have um, that much money. So I just printed it on my home printer. And um, I bound the cards myself. And I only did 10 of them, which is not very much. You know, If you want to be a promotional designer today, I know how to do it differently, but at the time. So um, <laughs> I did this list of my 10 most favorite places uh, magazines and newspapers that I wanted to work for, and I sent it off. And then I didn't hear anything for like a really long time. And I'd almost forgotten about it, when one day, out of the blue, um, the LA Times called me an editor. And I was kind of floored. I was so excited that he wanted to work with me. And this, this editor, he took a chance on somebody who was just right out of school, didn't have any experience. And I was so grateful to him for that. Um, and I had so much fun working with him. So he would fax me a story. This is a long time ago, so fax, you know. Like, <laughs> anyway, um, so he would fax me a story. I would do three sketches. I'd send it back to him. 
and the next day, because it was always really fast, because you know it's newspaper. And so on Friday, he would pick his sketch. Then all weekend long, I would just paint, 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 paint. And then on Friday or Monday morning, I would have to deliver the final painting. And one of the first assignments that I had with him was this story that was called Travels with Mom. And for me, this really exemplifies love. Um, it's the love of travel, and it's the love that this woman has for her mom and their travels together. And when this came out on the stands, I was so excited that I ran out and bought 10 copies. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go here and look at my notes. Um, I want to argue today that it is our job not only to love our job, but also the people that we work with. Um, I think we all need somebody at work that trusts us and that kind of is looking out for us. And I don't think that that's always really obvious. Um, sometimes, you know, you may not feel as trusted at work. Um, but I think that, um, sorry, let me get back to here. Uh, but conversely, when the ideas are flowing and um, you, know, you do have the trust at work, then I think fantastic things can happen. And I wanted to tell you about one such story. I was um, in my 20s, and I had gotten a job at Otis College of Art and Design. And um, sorry, at, sorry, I had gotten a job at Mattel, and um, I was on my very first day, and next to me was this guy sitting, and I looked over to my side, we started talking, he seemed to be my age or so, and I said to him, um, you know, we just started talking about almost anything, and he, he told me, uh, what are you going to do at, at this job? And I said, um, well, I'm going to be the senior graphic designer. And I was quite proud of it. Um, and, and then I said, well, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, I'm the senior vice president of Mattel licensing. And so I was like, oh, OK, cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this guy was so passionate about his work. He was basically. Um, he had this way of talking about brand that just made you really feel like you wanted to spread it over the world, you wanted to kind of follow him. He just had this charisma about brand. And when I had worked there for a while, um, he wanted to put a designer in the Mattel France office. And um, Basically, what he wanted to do is to have this person, this designer, travel around to all the 300 Mattel licensees and kind of give them the lay of the land of what the Mattel brand is. And I wanted to be that person. I was like, hi, give me that job. I really want the job. And um, I talked to my boss. And my boss was not very willing at first to give me the job. Um, but we had many conversations, and eventually she did let me go there. And I was so excited. And this senior VP, he talked to me um, before I left, and he told me about how important this position was. And he said, Sophia, you are going to go out there. You're going to travel to all these different places. You are going to you know, lecture to them and tell them how important it is to stay consistent with our brand. And I thought, wow, like he put so much trust in me, and I kind of vowed to not disappoint anyone. And so, you know, I thought I would love going to Paris. I was so excited. I mean, I was Swedish after all. How could it not be good? You know, like I'm from Europe. Of course, I'm going to love it. But when I got there, I actually didn't. Um, I kind of actually felt a little lost. And I think one of the things was um, my French was not really, really good. And everyone in the French office only spoke French. And they had no, they just did not want to speak any English at all, just French. 
And so I couldn't really communicate that well with them. And then on top of that, I think they just didn't like me as a person. Like, I don't know. Like, they just, I think they felt like I was a that spy girl in there again. You know, like, I just, I wasn't, <laughs> they were marketing people, and I was basically the only designer going there. Um, so that didn't really get off to a very good start. But I started traveling around. I would do these, like, really long travels. And what I would do is I would first go to Milan, and then to Barcelona, then to London, then to Frankfurt, then to Copenhagen, and then back to Paris. And in all those places, I would meet all these different licensees. And um, that, at first, didn't go so well either. <laughs> I was starting to lecture to them. And you have to understand, these were people that had established companies. and. They were oftentimes older men. And here was I, a 20-something, trying to lecture to them. And you know that didn't go over so well at first. But then we had some successes. And basically, um, what happened was I started to um, work with a few of them. And they got their ads done. And they were cohesive. And they were really successful. So the next time I traveled around, I had people lining up that wanted to talk to me. And so that was really cool, and I was really excited about that. But what about the people in the Mattel France office? Well, that actually got better, too. It took quite a while. It took about maybe six months or so. But I think when they started to understand that I actually wanted to be part of their team, and I didn't you know, want to you know, infiltrate or do something bad. You know, I just wanted to be part of their team, and I wanted us to be successful together. Um, and we came around to this, this big project that we had um, <coughs> twice a year in Florence, Italy. And it was a trade show for licensing for apparel for little girls. And here is the billboard that we had from that time. So we do fashion shoots and stuff, and um, you know we'd have to put up billboards all over the city, Firenze, and um, I think we just came together as a team around that. We also had another event. Um, this was in Paris. This was a big licensing event where we um, lit up the entire Bourse building in Paris in pink, and we had a big fashion show. And so I think just those projects together made me love you know, working there. And I think you know, we came together really as a big team. One thing that I know for sure about um, loving your work and doing really amazing work is that you have to take some risks. And I think. Um, Taking risks can seem you know, difficult, but if you never take any risks in your work that you're doing, then I think you're just going to be doing the same thing over and over again. You're going to kind of stay on the safe side. And you know, this is very difficult because I think people are afraid to make mistakes, even you know, when we are kids in school, we're kind of told that mistakes are bad. And I think as designers and creatives, we're just so hard on ourselves. Like we always want to have the best concept and the nicest design, and the you know always be perfect. Um, but I think there's something really good about being able to say like, I'm going to go out and do this, and if it comes out great, that's awesome, and if not, then not. There's this really great quote by Albert Einstein where he says. A ship is always safe at the shore, but that is not what it's built for. So um, basically, I feel like when you're taking a chance in your work like that, some amazing things can happen. When you have the trust from the people around you, and you're kind of just putting it out there. Um, I had an experience like that at Target, where I had um, a designer who had just started on my team. And he was really young. 
he was very, very excited. Um, and he wanted, obviously, to do a really good job. Uh, and he was like, Sophia, I want a big project. I want to work on something big, like a big campaign or something. And I was like, mm, what? You know, like, I don't know if he's ready yet, but like, you know, we'll see. And then there was this big project that we had, which was um, Alice Temperley in London that we were working with. And we needed to do like a big PR campaign around it. And we were going to actually have the PR campaign in London with the PR event, and we were going to have the Alice Temperley clothing for Target at Selfridges. And so I said, well, go for it. You know, do it. Like, we'll be here. And so we brainstormed all of us together and tried to come up with lots of different ideas. And then he kind of went off and, you know, did his thing. And when he came back, I was so amazed of what he had come up with. I think I just was kind of floored because I thought, you know, he's so young and, you know, how come that he can have so many great ideas? And, you know, that kind of taught me something. So here's kind of what he did. We had these pods around the city of London where we had models that were dressed up in the Alice Temperley clothing. And, you know, we had these promotional materials, and here are the racks of clothing in the Selfridges store. And I just thought he did a really great job. And I've had that experience here at Herman Miller, too, and in other places where I feel like when you really trust a designer to come up with their own concept, and not, you're not dictating somebody to do something, but just really kind of letting them come with their ideas. And then, of course, you're helping along the way. But um, I think some really amazing things can happen. So here at Herman Miller, I'll tell you about a similar experience that I had. It was a couple of years ago. And we <laughs> were preparing for Neocon, as usual. And Neocon is this trade show in Chicago, as I'm sure most of you know. And I was working with Stephen Floyd, who's here today. He's there back there. <laughs> and um, Stephen is a really great environmental designer. And I have huge respect for him. And I was working on all of the graphics in the showroom. And he had come up with this really you know, kind of great concept for everything. But then we also needed to do the South Lobby, and because we were kind of taking that over. And this year, Stephen had in mind um, this amazing concept of, it was like an exhibition um, of Eames sh shell chairs. And it looked like this. The problem was, I didn't have any time to work on the graphics. And uh, I was like, OK, um, I was thinking about Anne in my team, and she was pretty new on my team at the time. Um, she had started working for me right out of school, and then when she um, had been with me for a little more than a year, I think that's when this kind of assignment came up. And at the time, I think I was a little stressed too, because there were just so much going on. And so I, I, you know, I talked to Anne, and I was like, you know, here's the assignment. This is what we need to do. And I said, just you know, come up with some ideas. And then she went off. And then I think I was kind of thinking to myself, like, what is she going to come up with? Like, it's probably going to be something about, like, the history of the Eames chair or like, you know, something similar to that. Um, and then she came back, and she had this amazing idea. It was just so different. And it helps to know that Anne comes from a family of engineers, and she's really good at figuring things out. So she said, Sophia, let's do this. Um, let's, let's tell people how many different ways that they can order the Eames chair from us, like all the options that they can choose from. And she had figured out that that was 51,577 <laughs> ways. And I was like, wow, like, how, how did you come up with that? And, and you know, that was just so her. 
And to me, that, that's when I started thinking, wow, we all have so different brains. And this is like so amazing because you, know, you have all these different people coming together. And how could you get such an amazing concept for something like Neocon if you didn't have all these people working together? You know, Steven with his amazing ideas and with her idea and all of it kind of you know, getting improved by us all working together on all of this. So what about failures? Have I had any? Yes, many. Um, here at Herman Miller and in other places too before that. And I've also had people on my team who have had failures. But I have to say, every time that that happened, it was, in my mind, a really brave attempt for them to do something new and exciting and they put all their passion and love into it, and I will always applaud that, no matter what. So I wanna leave you with a thought here today. Love is a feeling that you seldom create by yourself. Whether you're talking about the love for your project or the love for a person, there's usually more than one person involved. But once that feeling gets going, it's pretty powerful. Just imagine, imagine a company where everyone just loved to go to their work. Imagine what that could do to the projects themselves, to retention, to the overall company's performance. There is no limit to what can be achieved in the name of love. Thank you.